Hello, I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, I am pleasantly surprised because I used to make a lot of kombucha. Um, and typically, since it's cold up in the Poconos, <clears throat> uh, the kombucha should be stored in a dark, uh, warm place. And I don't have like a... I ordered a belt to wrap around this to warm it up. <laughs> but I don't know how to hook it up. I think I bought the wrong one anyway. Um, there are different ways, different techniques to keep it warmer. Um, but I, I've yet to figure exactly which is the best one for me. However, I would always have a, com a new batch of kombucha. This is three gallons. I use a vase, right? <laughs> you don't have something, so invent something, right? Um, so I make, I would make three, three gallons. I used to have a collection of these bottles here. Uh, this is not the kombucha that comes in the original bottle, just for disclosure. Um, <clears throat> however, this has taken since it is today... October 31st and um, I said I put in this kombucha batch way back in June okay early June I think it was like June 14th it's taken this long and I've just been lazy about dumping it it turns out that it wasn't that it, it actually is good so today I said it's my day off <clears throat> time to get rid of this load and just dump it in my backyard and so it didn't smell bad. It didn't have any colors. Uh, here's the SCOBY. And the SCOBY grew significantly. I had bought the SCOBY. That's the way you initially store unless you have somebody who will give it to you. But this is the SCOBY. And it's in pretty good shape, the SCOBY. It's huge because this is a huge bottle. So the SCOBY takes the shape of the width of the container. So I figured, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save the SCOBY in some of its juice. And I'm going to brew fresh tea with sugar so it turns out <clears throat> I start to dump it and I use my little <clears throat> electric spout here and I started to pour it here in this bottle and then I figured eh, let me catch some with my hand and, and kind of like taste it I'm like this is the real kombucha shockingly enough it didn't go bad and although it took an eternity for it to make what happened the reason why there was a delay this is my theory. I tested the system and I decided to make it with purified water instead of distilled water. Okay, so dif the difference is distilled water has no minerals in it. That's why it's not good to drink uh, because if, if you use distilled water to drink, to hydrate, you're not going to hydrate because it's really the minerals that hydrate you. Uh, and I have a, a water distiller, but I'm too lazy to use it. It pulls a lot of power. And so anyway... Uh, this is my kombucha here. And as you can see, it's got, it looks like a store bought. Look, it's got the little frothy stuff. I figured I dumped a lot of it from here, but I still have plenty more before I caught on to the fact that this is a real kombucha. Boy, am I so proud of myself for being lazy and procrastinating in dumping this precious scoby and the kombucha in itself that it came in. Okay. So th this is such a pleasant surprise. Um, I have another video that I'm going to make because I've been very lazy in dumping stuff. Um, a soup that I made from my pressure cooker, electric pressure cooker. Well, I'm no scientist, but I'll tell you one thing. I'm always lazy about dumping the stuff in my electric pressure cooker. And guess what? The, the, the pots of a pressure cooker are built in a way that... I think it doesn't let any air in, okay? Which means the stuff never goes bad. It's like it's canned. Every time I procrastinate, the food is never bad, never goes bad. I could procrastinate two, three months and I'll just put it out of my sight so I don't have to deal with it. But it never goes bad. So I'm, I'm going to prove, I haven't opened uh, my old soup yet. But I, I'm going to do, I'm going to clear this after this video and I'm going to bring my old, old soup in my pressure cooker and I'm willing to bet anybody that that soup has not gone bad. It never does. It's like it's canned. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering if pe how many people know that because you could actually store good food in a pressure cooker. Just, I mean, sounds crazy, but I, I'm learning through my own experiments. People are giving me tips. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff I'm learning on my own and unlearning from some bad tips. 
Okay, so I just wanted to share with you this miracle that the kombucha has survived all of these months. It actually grew the scoby. The kombucha turned into a real kombucha uh, and never went bad. That's another thing, which is quite interesting. And uh, if you want to make a large batch, just get yourself one of these electric spouts, as, which is what I use to pour it into this bottle and many other bottles. And so let's see if I could share a moment with you as I pour some more into my other bottles. Let's see if I could adjust this thing so you could watch as I do it. Okay, let's see if the camera stays. All right, it's staying. You can see a little bit too much of stuff I don't want you to see, but it's all good. And so I'm gonna start with this bottle. I bought this at the dollar store and uh, it really seals really well. So I'm going to store, I mean, this is kind of hard to, you can see, this is kind of hard to unlock. So, um, I'm going to push it up with something. I don't want to hurt the bottle. I don't want to hurt me, myself. Uh, so, let me just push it up. Let me see. Uh, <laughs> I can't do it on camera because I'm a little rough on it when I do it, when I succeed in doing it. So, watch. Take a stab at it. Come on, girlfriend. There you go. Boom. Okay. So, now I'm going to refill this. It's clean inside. The outside got a little, whatever. But watch, I'm going to demonstrate how I'm going to empty out this beautiful th th three gallon kombucha into my precious blue bottle, right? And here we go. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, great, Felice. Now you're spilling it because you want to show off in the camera, in front of the camera, so you're moving around. You see how it looks like it's got beer? Look at that. It looks like I'm pouring beer. You see the suds? A little bit of suds. And so I'm going to do this for the rest of the bottom. Oop. Boom. All right, Felice. All right. So I made a little bit of a mess, but hey, I'm the one that has to clean it, right? And um, it's all good. So now I'm going to take a taste test. How's that? I'm going to pour a little bit right here. Oh, can you see? Right here. Oh, great, Felice. Now you're really spilling. My goodness. Can't take you anywhere, huh? Yep, I talk to myself all right. Anyway, you ever go to, like, a vitamin shop and they give you a taste of stuff? And it looks like this, doesn't it? Do you recall? I don't know if they still sell kombucha, but they give you a taste test in a cup just like this. And all you do is taste it. I'm going to taste it now again. Wow. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in another bottle with strawberries and it's going to taste delightful. It's going to be refrigerated. I'm going to put some strawberries in it and it's going to be the best dessert ever. But let me share some other things with you in my next video. Uh, I haven't shown you all of the fermentation processes that I've been doing. Uh, but I'm going to get to that to you today. Thank you for watching my kombucha experience. I'm back to kombucha. It has been since 2019 that I always used to make it. We're in 2023. And I am proud to say that I am back to doing my kombucha. And it's going to be better than ever. So the lesson learned here is that um, I learned that if you use... You could use filtered water, but it takes an eternity for it to get done, okay? Uh, and I think that it really did contribute to using the wrong type of water. Thank you for watching and have yourself a great rest of your day. Bye now.